All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Bo from the Oda Files, and I'm gonna talk to you today about legendary cars. There are many reasons why a car is legendary, but this car is legendary because Jeremy Clarkson says this is one of the worst car ever made. Let's find out whether he was correct in his assessment of this vehicle. So a little bit of introduction about this car. This is a 2002 Toyota Sora. It is also known as the Lexus SC430 in some markets. The production period of this car is actually quite long. From 2001 until the early part of 2011-12, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Now for the first, uh, I'm going to talk about the JDM version, which is the ones in Japan. From 2001 until 2005, they are produced as Toyota Saurus. Then after that, they were sold as Lexus SC430 until 11 and 12. So these cars didn't change much uh, throughout its 10 plus years of production uh, uh, period. Uh, the only difference between the Lexus version and the Toyota version is very minor tweak in the outlook and also the, the most the biggest difference is actually the gearbox. The Toyota ones come with a five speed automatic and the Lexus ones are paired to a six speed automatic gearbox. But other than that, it is practically the same car. It is built with the same material, practically the same look as well, with a very minor adjustment in its uh, in its looks. So what is this Toyota Sora? It is quite rare for a Japanese car actually, but it has a V8 in front. It's a 4.3 liter V8. This car has a collapsible hardtop. Uh, it has a 2 plus 2 configuration. So, but the, realistically speaking, it is only for two adults here with adequate headroom to adults. The rear seats are, well, they are ornamental. That's the, that's the only way to describe the rear seats. The 3 UZ engine comes from the, uh, it's the same power plant as the LS430 uh, from the same period. So basically, they just took an S-Class competitor, the LS engine, and they plonk it into a GS-based body, shorten the body, and make it into a sports coupe, sports cabriolet to be more exact. So this car has uh, 290 horses, give or take, I can't remember exactly. It has 290 horses, it's not a lot coming from a 4.3 litre, uh, but the torque is quite good, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 400-ish Newton meter of torque goes from 0 to 100 in around 5-ish, 6 seconds. It is a fast car, it accelerates like a locomotive, but it's not exactly a sports car. So let's talk about what this car is. So figures aside, what is this car? Well, the best way to describe this car is that it's a Grand Tourer. What are Grand Tourers? Grand Tourers comes in many guises. Uh, to give you some examples of Grand Tourer, well, the first one that comes to mind is basically the Mercedes-Benz SL, SL500. So this, this class of cars are basically big, heavy, comfortable cars that are meant to go on long journey with a big heart to give you good acceleration but they don't necessarily handles like a sports car one of the characteristics of a true sports car is that it needs to handle well it needs to be quick in its turn sharp in its turn so generally a proper sports car is light very light generally with harsher suspension to achieve better cornering ability but all of this make for a very uncomfortable car so the formula to make a gt is basically making a sports car like vehicle with very good acceleration speed like a sports car kind of acceleration but does not break your back in terms of its comfort so that's what a gt is the best way to describe this car is that it aspires to be like a a European lifestyle GT car. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, the Toyota sent an entire team of designers uh, to a, a Mediterranean seaside city to soak in the atmosphere uh, and aesthetics of the environment to design this car. Uh, well, apparently it was designed to, uh, to look like a yacht. Um, to be honest, I, I failed to see any semblance or resemblance with a yacht. The only thing yacht like about this car, to be honest, is the handling. There's another way to look at this car. This, this, this car is a little bit confusing. 
it wants to be a lot of things at the same time. It wants to be Mediterranean lifestyle GD car. But at the same time, Lexus or Toyota aims this car primarily at the American market. And it shows a little bit in the sense that it, as a European GT car, you do not need such a big engine. We're not talking about a huge uh, Ferrari California size vehicle. It has the width of a Mercedes Benz E Class, but the length of a Mercedes Benz C Class. It is quite compact despite being quite heavy. And um, it doesn't really need a 4.3 litre V8. To be honest, <coughs> a well-tuned 3.5 V6 or even maybe a 3 litre V6 that uh, with a turbo charge would, would have been enough to propel this car uh, to this kind of speed. Why did they drop a V8 into this car? That is because Toyota was aiming squarely at the American market when they produced this car. Uh, consequently, it runs a little bit like an American muscle car. Uh, it has a huge V8 in the front, producing a sea of torque, but it handles like a boat, like a yacht. It is also at the same time, it has some Toyota sensibilities in it. Uh, so it doesn't have that muscle car rawness and it doesn't have that loud, brash attitude that muscle cars exude. This is actually very refined, you can hardly hear the V8 at all, which is actually a shame. It has a V8, a Japanese V8 at that. That is so rare. But yet, you can't hear the V8 roar. You can't hear the exhaust at all. And there is almost no noise whatsoever. We are discussing whether Jeremy Clarkson was correct in his evaluation of this vehicle, calling it one of the worst car ever made. If I remember correctly, he used words, uh, he specifically said that the handling of this car was just so poor that it is like a mistake, a mistake that a company as big as Toyota should not have made. So we shall start off with um, what I don't like about this car. The first thing I don't like about this car is the tuning of the vehicle. I don't think it's a mistake per se. I don't think they just made a mistake in the tuning of this car. Because from what you can see, there are a lot of effort that, that, that Toyota's engineers put into this car to make it what it is. A lot more effort than you would usually see from Toyota. So they did a lot of very specific things to make this car the way it is. But I, where I think they fail, or where I think they made a mistake, is they fail to identify what their clientele or what their intended customer are looking for in this segment of vehicle. First thing that was wrong with the tuning of this car is the suspension uh, setup itself. It is way too pillowy, it is way too soft, it is almost like riding on a pillow. It rides a little bit like the Mercedes-Benz W220 S-Class, uh, that one with the air suspension that breaks all the time. It wharfs around, it sways, it has huge amount of body roll. It is all over the place. The handling of this car is literally all over the place. Now, will a suspension change modify this? Uh, they, to be honest, I felt that they could have made it a little bit firmer. But I don't think it will significantly improve this car. That's because there are other aspects of this car's tuning that is similarly soft and wallowy. An example would be the steering wheel. The steering wheel is properly weighted, to be honest. I felt that the weight is good. However, it is quite vague and very inaccurate. Now, of course, a GT car, I'm not expecting a sports car level of twitchiness. But this is this steering is genuinely lazy. So I'm in a power mode now, uh, where the gearbox is a little bit more aggressive. But the, the steering is just not following up with the aggression of the gearbox. It's just not aggressive enough. And the accelerator is still the same. It is still quite a lazy... V8 power plant. Uh, it is powerful. Do not for a second think that this car is not powerful. In a straight acceleration contest, it will outrun most sports cars, but it is not agile like uh, a modern sports car ought to be, a sports car ought to be. 
So the tuning of the suspension, the gearbox and the uh, steering response is very very lazy. It is very cruiser like. So in that sense, it is staying true to the speed of a Grand Tourer but a Grand Tourer of today's making is a lot more sporty than this. This feels like a Grand Tourer from 80s and early 90s maybe. Yeah, uh, it is. That is one thing I didn't like about the car. The second thing I don't like about this car, which again has something to do with the performance itself, the chassis of this car is not very well sorted out. Um, I don't know whether it's a technical capabilities issue or Toyota just didn't bother to make it competent. What happened is that there are two issues here with the chassis. The, the first issue is the rigidity itself. Um, I do feel a lot of body flexing, even with the roof closed. And mind you, this is a hard top. So it does provide some tension, uh, at least. But I do feel a lot of flexing when, for example, I'm diagonally going across uh, a road bump. The second issue with the chassis is the weight distribution. Now, this is something that is a very easy fix, actually. I personally think it's a very easy fix. Um, and it's the closest thing that we can call a mistake of this car. Uh, this car has quite poor uh, weight distribution. Now, it has a huge V8 in the front. So the front end, it's very, very nose heavy. When you brake, it does want to nose dive a little bit. Um, but that aside, a lot of cars has this problem. All A lot of sports car, front engine sports car has this problem. Uh, the issue, however, is that you have a very heavy hard top roof sitting above your head. Now, this, this hard top roof is so heavy that you physically feel that the distribution of the weight of this vehicle is a lot better when you retract this roof and into the, the boot of the vehicle. The characteristic of the driving of the car, the handling of the car changes depending on whether your roof is up or not. I felt that Toyota really ought to have op opted for a lighter material for their roof because it severely affects the handling of this car. So that, those are the two aspects of this vehicle that I have complaints about. So in that sense, Jeremy Clarkson was correct. It handles horribly um, for a sports car. Is this a mistake by Toyota? Now, I, that's where I disagree with Jeremy Clarkson. I'm pretty sure Toyota is capable of delivering a car that handles much better than this. But I think they weren't intending to. This car was intended by Toyota to appeal to that middle aged or older gentleman who is looking for a flashy car to signify that he is in a very comfortable place in his life, but his physical capabilities make it impossible for him to enjoy a true sports car like a Ferrari or a, a Lamborghini and he's looking for something more comfortable. This market segment I think was a lot larger back then than they are now. Uh, you can see a decline in the Mercedes-Benz SL vehicle and similarly in this car uh, you can see over the years the SL has gotten from a, a really desirable car. Now you can hardly see any SLs on the road anymore. This Sora is really born in the wrong age. If it was born in the 80s, uh, I think it would have been a very in a very comfortable position. And that is why Jeremy Clarkson calls this one of the worst car in the world. Not because the car itself is inherently bad, but because it was born in the wrong era. It was born to a wrong generation. It was born to different sets of expectations. Now let's move on to what I like about this car. The design language of this car, the best way to, to describe the design language is that it's evergreen. Partially maybe because of our context in Malaysia, this car is so rare. But the looks of this car is actually very odd. Uh, odd in a very interesting way. If you look from a side profile of this car, this the front and the rear looks almost symmetrical. That's why a lot of people has, have, have commented that this car looks a bit like a pillow with a bulge in the center. 
Now, the reason why it is symmetrical front and back may have something to do with the fact that they need that extra space and the height to store this collapsible top in the rear. Looks is very subjective. Some people like it, some people dislike it. I find that it is unique and it is inoffensive and quite evergreen. The second thing I like about this car is actually the ride quality. I had a, a, a spinal injury uh, not too long ago and I was hospitalized for a, a, a quite a while and being a car guy, I can't wait to get back into uh, uh, driving uh, the moment I can. I wouldn't dare going into a, a Porsche. I had no problem enjoying myself driving this car at all. Well, in that sense, it was targeting the correct target market. If you're an old man, chances are you do have some back problem. And having back problem means getting in and out of a Ferrari or a Porsche can be a bit of a challenge. This car will not give you that issue. Another thing I like about this car is the legendary Toyota reliability. Uh, generally, there are, are two ways to achieve reliability. Number one is by keeping your car simple. By not taking unnecessary risk, by not putting unnecessary items into your car and overcomplicate your vehicle, reducing the chances or statistical probability of things going wrong in your vehicle. That is the first way to achieve reliability. The second way to achieve reliability is to use really robust, very good material in the assembly of your vehicle. This Toyota Sora is reliable in both that sense. Number one, it is its construction is actually quite simple. It is a very simplistic, very Toyota approach to vehicle building. Plonk a huge engine, tune it down so that you're not stressing the engine or any moving parts out at any point in time and then send it out into the world. And the second thing is this car is made out of the best material that Toyota has and can put into a car at that time. If you look at this interior, it is still pristine after so many years. This car is 15 years old. There is not a single crack, not a panel is loose because Toyota used the best material they have to construct this car. Now, is this one of the worst car ever made? Well, I have to disagree with Jeremy Clarkson. I think he was wrong. This is not one of the worst car ever made. It was intended by Toyota to drive and feel like this. Now, whether you agree with Toyota's approach or not, that's entirely up to you and that's very subjective. Now, will I recommend this car? Well, that depends. Now, if you're looking for one weekend car and you're looking for something sporty, now, I may not necessarily recommend this car. The reason is because, as unique as it is, it does not make you feel like a hero on the road. In fact, it feels like a very large sedan packaged in a very small sporty uh, uh, sports car like package so you don't get a sensation of a true sports car however if you are looking for an additional weekend car if you already have a sporty coupe at home then i would strongly recommend this car for its longevity its uniqueness and its build quality this is the Autofiles signing out from the Toyota Sora 2002.